As a first-time visitor, I share my impressions of Medellin after having spent 55 days in this vibrant city. We originally came to Medellin by air from Bogota. One of the nice things about the flight was on the flight I was able to see the, the mountains and, the, and the, the countryside as we were getting closer to Medellin and really in anticipation of what Medellin was going to look like when we got here. Um, we landed in Jose Maria Cordova International Airport, which is about 45 minute drive outside of Medellin. One of the nice things about the airport being 45 minutes out of Medellin was that it also gave us an opportunity to see the countryside and the mountains in the area surrounding Medellin on the drive in, which I really loved. Um, seeing that scenery and we went through the uh, Tunnel de Orient or the Eastern Tunnel as it's also known uh, on the way to Medellin from the airport uh, and that was kind of cool that tunnel is uh, 8.2 kilometers long 5.1 miles long I believe it might be one of the longest tunnels mountain tunnels I've ever been in um, and when we emerged from the tunnel, as we were getting closer to uh, Medellin, I just love the mountain scenery and, and uh, how Medellin is nestled into the mountains. And as, we got, as I got my first glimpse of Medellin, I knew right away that I was going to enjoy being in the city just because uh, it just was, it's just beautiful scenery coming in to see the city. And I really like the fact that it's in the mountains, nestled in the mountains. And then as we got into the city, I like Medellin even more just based on uh, the way the city was kind of set up, the infrastructure and the roads and the green spaces and the architecture. It was uh, very welcoming. I, I felt comfortable coming into the city versus a lot of other big cities, concrete jungles that we've been in. They, they feel cold and kind of, they just, I just had a good feeling coming into Medellin. And I've had that feeling um, throughout our entire time in Medellin. It just seemed like um, a welcome, a, a kind of a welcoming, attractive looking city as we drove into it. So I felt that way our entire time that we've been staying in Medellin. During our time in Medellin, we stayed in two different neighborhoods in the city. Uh, when we first arrived in Medellin, we stayed in the Belen area of the city, the Belen neighborhood, uh, which was literally right next door to the Lorelli's neighborhood. Um, and I did get a chance to go from, it, it was literally just a 10 minute walk or so to the Laurelis neighborhood. And there was a, um, a mall in Laurelis that I went to that I went to for grocery shopping and so on. And so that was kind of nice. We really enjoyed the Belen neighborhood. We found it was a, a very attractive neighborhood, um, just visually attractive and uh, it was quiet and we felt like safe and comfortable in that neighborhood um, and we had all the conveniences uh, or every, everything we needed like groceries, pharmacy, um, restaurants and other miscellaneous services were all in easy walking distance and there was lots of variety in the services. Uh, so we really enjoyed that neighborhood. Um, then we moved to the Aranjuez neighborhood, which was um, a mountainside uh, neighborhood. We didn't know that when we booked it. Um, and the only reason I mentioned the, the, the terrain of the Aranjuez neighborhood is because, <coughs> excuse me, because of uh, Roxanne's leg injury, it turned out to be not the best neighborhood for us to be in. Uh, and it 
uh, be, because it was hilly and she wasn't able to, to navigate hills and steep, steep uh, terrain with her crutches. And the, uh, so it, it didn't turn out to be our best booking. And also our apartment was on the third floor of the building. So <clears throat> she had to navigate the, the stairs with her crutches. Whereas in Belen, it was all flat and it was a flat neighborhood and it was a little more convenient considering uh, than Aranjez was considering Roxanne's leg injury. Um, I found that the Aranjez neighborhood was a little bit noisier and hectic and not as attractive, in our opinion, not as an attractive neighborhood uh, as the Belen neighborhood. It was just um, a, a busier kind of a 24-7 always on the go, kind of always noisy neighborhood, um, which I guess, honestly, at, at night, it was very noisy. And sometimes the, uh, the noise from the party zone that we were close to carried blocks and blocks into our apartment and that kind of interrupted our, our, our sleep at, at, at some times. But, uh, other than that, it, it had all the services that we needed. It was, I guess, a better neighborhood for me in terms of exercise, because it was a bit more of a workout to go walk around the neighborhood, to go to the grocery store or whatever it was when I was going to pick up, um, take out to bring back to the apartment to, for Roxanne and I to eat, because she couldn't go out to the restaurants to eat. Um, I got a bit more exercise, so that was a, a positive. One of the things we really liked about our apartment in the Aranjez neighborhood was that uh, we had a beautiful view out our window being on the third floor. We had, I think it was a westward view of the city of Medellin and towards the mountains. And we really loved just looking out at the scenery of, of the city and especially at night because it was a very, it was a very pretty scene looking out at the, the city lights kind of twinkling. It almost looked like stars on the ground and watching the traffic and the, all the lights and there was sometimes fireworks and um, which was part of the noise. And it was just a beautiful scene. And we ended up um, seeing a number of really nice sunsets over top the mountains. Uh, so we really enjoyed that apartment in Aranjuez. I really liked Medellin in general, uh, and I can't put a very descriptive word to it, but I found that it, it uh, had a very vibrant, lively, maybe almost electric feel to it. It felt like a young city. Um, kind of like a 24-7, uh, the city that never sleeps, kind of. Um, and uh, I just found, and uh, it just seems, seemed to be a, a city alive with, a, with life and culture and activity. So I, I, I really enjoyed being in Medellin. On the topic of um, medical services in Medellin, I'm only going to comment briefly because Roxanne's already done a video on that. Um, but I feel like I need to comment because I believe that the medical services that we experienced uh, need or um, deserve a shout out, a positive shout out by, by me because we found that uh, the experience we had with the medical system in Medellin was very, very excellent. Um, Roxanne received uh, a number of services through the Pablo Toban Arib Hospital, which uh, was a private hospital that we had been referred to from the hospital that she originally saw in Bogota. Um, and she received 
multiple services from there and also ended up receiving some uh, private physiotherapy uh, services from a private agency outside of the hospital. But at the hospital, she had multiple medical professionals involved with her, including an orthopedic surgeon. And she had like emergency treatment. She had follow-up. She had surgery. She had post-op uh, treatment and follow-up. And then she had the, the physiotherapy outside the hospital. And all of those services were absolutely outstanding and excellent and very professional. And we were also lucky enough to have the International Patient Center at the hospital involved with us. Uh, we got connected with that and they did an awesome job at um, coordinating all of Roxanne's appointments and the services and the procedures that she was getting, including the surgery. They did uh, communication in between Roxanne and myself and uh, our out of country international health insurance. They coordinated that. They, um, they did um, in translation for us translating the services and they just, it was an absolutely awesome experience um, that Roxanne had in the healthcare system in, uh, in Medellin here. So I wanted to give a positive shout out to the healthcare system here in Medellin. It was really cool to see the uh, world-class public transportation system here in Medellin with the and the infrastructure associated with it with the the metro the trams the buses and the cable cars um, i only got one chance to use the system but it was like i uh, the system the 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 metro and the system was well maintained clean it almost looked like it had just been built the whole system is is maintained so well and the locals are are uh, very proud of it and and there's no graffiti there's no trash there's no it, it's it's like you're walking onto a newly built um, transportation system and it was amazing to see and um, while we were here in Medellin we primarily used Uber and taxis to get around um, and I might add that they were very very reasonably priced and um, our experience with the Uber was much better than our experience with the taxis. We had a few taxi rides that we were less than happy with um, so we tried to go with Uber whenever we could uh, just because it was more convenient and sometimes it was even less expensive. Um, so that's how we got around. Roxanne and I have found the people and locals of uh, Medellin have been very, very friendly and welcoming. And we've felt not quite at home, but just very welcome and safe and just Overall, it's it's been a very good experience, and we haven't we haven't had any bad experiences. Less one bad experience I had, uh, which I'll tell you about. I was uh, at the end of a day, uh, following a, a walking city tour. I had it, my first ever attempted robbery attempt on me, a violent kind of a violent aggressive robbery attempt. And uh, it shook me up a bit because I've never had anything like that happen to me, which is quite amazing if you consider how long I've been on the planet that I've never had to, I've never faced a, a situation like that. But what I'm really fortunate about is that earlier that same day on the walking tour, um, 
our guide, one of the first things he did at the beginning of our tour is talk to us about personal safety and about being in Medellin. And he went through um, kind of the neighborhoods we need to be cautious of and the types of um, situations that we might encounter. And he actually went through in demonstrating the how physically the, the robbery attempts and pickpocketing and, and so on might actually occur and kind of gave us the heads up of what to be aware of and how to we can react to those situations if they if they occur so fortunately I was before this incident happened to me I was kind of on guard with this in the back of my mind and as it turned out this attempted robbery followed what our guide had told us in terms of what they were going to try this fellow was going to try to do and fortunately because of having been told that I was able to react in a defensive manner to his movements to keep myself safe and prevent myself from losing my phone and wallet and um, what I'm thankful and fortunate about is if I hadn't got that that explanation of what to keep an eye for I would have been caught completely off guard and chances are I would have lost my wallet my phone and I might have even been physically harmed one of the things I really liked about Medellin uh, was my tour of Comuna 13 and how that brought awareness to me uh, about how the city of Medellin has transformed itself from being in the past one of the most dangerous and violent places in the world um, how it transformed into being a safer uh, rejuvenated city uh, with vibrant culture arts economy um, social socially on on all levels it's it's a new vibrant city looking towards the future away from its violent past and especially how um, they've turned what used to be a violent place into an incredible tourist draw and they've got people coming from all over the world to see this vibrant new city um, so that is absolutely amazing I, and the reason I mention that is because I grew up in the 70s, 80s, and 90s in Canada, as many other people did, with the media telling me that Colombia was a violent, uh, dangerous place uh, that was dominated by war and the criminal narcotics industry. And uh, to be able to come here in 2024 and to see the complete polar opposite of that here in Medellin uh, was, was an incredible experience. Um, so I am so happy that I had the opportunity to come to Medellin and see this wonderful city. As you've seen from the earlier videos, I've been fortunate enough to see some of the sights and sounds of uh, Medellin. Um, I really enjoyed Comuna 13. The Guatapi, the rock of Guatapi Alpino, um, Pueblo Paisa, and uh, just getting out to see all the sights and sounds of uh, Medellin. It's beautiful, vibrant city, and I'm glad I've had the opportunity to come and see it and spend so much time in it. And to top everything off, I got all the most unique and one-of-a-kind birthday gifts from the city of Medellin. In the early morning hours of my birthday, about two o'clock in the morning, I was awoken uh, to my bed shaking and I 
was dazed and not understanding what had happened. I thought maybe something had fallen to the ground, but within a few minutes I realized that I had just experienced my first earthquake ever. Uh, I've never, I've never experienced an earthquake, and it's kind of amazing to me that in the early morning hours of my birthday, for the first time, the city of Medellin decided to give me, wake me up and give me a birthday present of, of experiencing my first earthquake. And honestly, I was a little worried and concerned. Uh, Roxanne was very nonchalant about it. Um, she just kind of went, just go back to sleep, don't worry about it. And that's because she knew, and I later discovered that uh, minor earthquakes in Medellin are, are not anything to be concerned about. So once I discovered that, I was able to get back to sleep and sleep feeling a little bit safer, but still a little bit worried because, like I say, I'm a prairie boy. I've never, I've never experienced an earthquake. So uh, I, was, I was worried about it, but it was kind of neat to get that as a birthday present for being in Medellin. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed my time here in Medellin and I am so glad I had the opportunity to come and see this beautiful city. I hope you enjoyed hearing my impressions and thoughts about Medellin today and if you did, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. Uh, we have always appreciate uh, hearing any comments you might have and don't forget to hit the bell button to be notified uh, of when our next video is coming out. We've got more of those coming out. Thank you for joining me today. Bye for now. See you on the next video.